Hi guys, welcome back to Enox Many channel. Let's go, let's go. So this is where I had left off. I was supposed to do this, but I didn't. All right, so the access, this is the scores of page 100 in the computer and it's on the right below. And they give us this information and they basically give us a frequency, f of x. They kind of start it out for us. So let's see if we can complete. So we are asked to find the midpoint. So if I look closely, it will be 20 plus that, or you can just follow the pattern, just keep adding 10. So that would be that, 34.5. When I use my calculator, so I can increase my speed. So bear with me, guys. But all we're doing is finding the midpoint between these two points. Well, not points between that range, all right? And for this one, it will be 54. So you just like adding 10, all right? So now we are supposed to multiply the midpoint by the frequency. So each row, 12 times this, this is 6, 5, 4. And for this one, it's 8, 80. So guys, use a calculator to just complete it quickly. And then you have 22 times 34.5, which is 7.59. And you continue like that. For the last one, it will be 25 times 24, which works out to 612.5. Here we have it, we complete the table, what they ask us to complete. And this is state the modal class interval. So the modal class interval would be the one with the highest value. So the one with the highest frequency, we go up just to see. And that would be, 20 to 29 since it's 25 is the highest number there. So that would be 20. I'm feeling like maybe that part will be 20 to 29. And it's a steady class interval if you should score 19.4 and 19.4 would actually be. Oh, you know what? 19.4 would be in this interval. It's 10 to 19. Does that take up to 19.5? And that is worth one more. They did say copy and complete the table. We did that already. Um, wait, so we get all of that marks already. We just do this for formality. He said, explain why the value of the mean of t in, in two is only an estimate. They didn't say we find the mean. Did they? Well, the mean because the numbers are not 100% accurate. I think I know what happened. I did on one video, but I didn't do it on the next. And then say, so in order to qualify for the next round of the competition, the score must be at least 40 points. What is the probability of selecting at random a student who qualifies for the next round? So we have a look at least 40. So we go back up to the to find at least 40, which is right here. So it can be 40 and greater. So when we add this, we get 40 plus 20 plus 20. 32 over 100. You can break it down. Um, so we can go into both of them. For so it's 32, go into this 25. So it's 8 over 25 by the priority of choosing at least. Let's go. All right, so now we are asked to do this vector. Question, it says the diagram below not drawn to scale shows a parallelogram OKLM where O is the origin. So here is the point zero, zero. The point S is 
on Km. So S is on Km such that Ms is equal to 2SQ. So whatever it is, the ratio is going to be 2 to 1, which is the length. All right, so it's 2 to 1. All right, let's put other things in perspective. It says the point dot here yeah, and OK, so from O to K is equal to U, and from O to M, O to M, O to M is equal to U. And it says now express each of the following in terms of U and B, and that is only one more, and they want the vector from M to K. So we cannot go directly so what we're going to do we're going to start from here so we're going from let's work with this case we're going from m to k and this is the root we're going to choose since we already know so this is u we're going to go from m to o like the video guys like the video plus then when we reach here we're going to go from o to k and that would be the distance that should be from M, M to K. So now MO, we are going against the arrow. <clears throat> so what we is when we're going against the arrow, we have a negative and the size of it will be U. So we just put minus U and we're going with the arrow. So we put V. Or we can turn it around and say that it's V minus U. Just to not have the negative amino here like that. All right. Now the axis now from S to L, which is from here to here. All right. Now we know that this MK now is V minus U. So the entire thing is V minus u. Let's put that in perspective. I'm going to put it over here, so v minus u, the entire thing. And they gave us a proportion, right? They told us that from here, this ms is two times mq. All right, so the ratio is two to one. Now the asking us to find, I'm gonna take the root from S to L. I'm gonna go SK. I'm thinking that would be a good one. And then go KL. So that's the root I'm thinking about. I could also take this one, but it, the distance will vary. So I'm not sure which of that they want, but I'm going to go SK. So I'm here, and I want to go from here to here. So I'm going to go SK. So let's remember we are going from S to L. And I'm going to go SK plus KL. Now, so since this size of this is Two and this is one, it means that it's out of three. So, right now, this would be one out of the three because the whole is <laughs> the whole is three because it's going to be two plus one. And we know that this is b minus u, so that means it's going to be one third bracket v minus u. And then we're going to plus, remember, it's a parallelogram, so this is going in the same direction. So that means here, so it would be also be u when going that direction plus u. Let us expand, so it's going to be one third. So it's going to be one third v plus one third times v, and then one third times u, which is minus one third u. And of course, it plus the big u, which is one in. So this is only like terms, so we'll put back this. It's going to be one third b, and then this is going to give us, it's like you're saying one minus, because you have one o u minus one third, which is going to give us positive 
filters be one that is worth two marks. So let me just put things in perspective. But this one is B minus U. We're about that show you guys already. And from S to L is going to be one third B plus two third U. And then now the axis now to go from O to S. So we are here. Since I know this little piece here already, I'm going to take this root. So I'm going to go from O to K. So let me do that. So since I know it already, I think that should be the easiest one. So from O to K, and then I'll go from K to S. Notice I'll be going against the arrow because it's MK. So I'm going against the arrow in that case. We soon discuss that still. So it's from O to K, and then we go so M to S. Notice the letter matter, letter, letter R that matters, all right? So boom, we have OK. So OK would be B. And then MS would be minus. All right, so we're going to put a minus in front of this, whatever this length was. And we had said that SK is equal to one third B minus C. So put a negative in front of it. So one third B minus B. Because that's what this is what we're called to. So what could be? Minus times that will give us one third, negative one third rather, B. And then this a negative times a negative should give us positive B. My you don't, my you don't get very different from of these and that is so worry. All right, so B minus that is going to give us two third B. That is one old B minus one third plus u and that would be our answer and that's from s from o to s if we had take this root it would have been a little bit different so it would have been u plus two thirds all right so we could have actually take this root so this now would have been u, and then this would have been two thirds, because right here, so it's two times it. So it would have been two thirds. So I've done that thing, you know, two thirds. I'm going to clear this and show you guys that. And it would have taken that root too. So just in case somebody had taken that root, let me show you the step for that one. So let us say you are taking this root, which is going to be U or OM plus, we go from M to S, right? From M to S is actually two thirds. And remember the entire distance of B minus U, but this one is two thirds. We're going with the arrow, so it's good. So probably it could have been easier. So then we multiply. It's going to be u plus two third b, and then we say positive times a negative minus two third u. So this now is going to be u minus two thirds, which is one minus, so it's one third b, one third u rather, plus two third. B. So if you take that, it will have been a different route, but it will also be correct. All right. And that would exactly basically. So guys, please ensure that you like the video. All right. All right, let's go on further now. Let's say the matrix J01, 
0, negative 1, 1, 0 presents a single transformation. The image of the point P under the translation. I think I did this on the earlier one. You know? Determine the coordinates of P. So all we're going to do now is to just multiply this coordinate or this matrix by x, y, and that should give us 5, 4. I will equate it to it, I will work it out. So let's do that. If he's like, I've done this one before, so it doesn't matter though, 0 minus 1, 1, 0, times a coordinate, we don't know what it is, x, y, represent it, and the result was 5, 4. Remember, x comes first, so that's 5, 4, we write it in the column format, 0 times x, 0, and then we have negative 1 times y, which is negative y. All right, so now, negative times color. So this now, negative y equal to 5. And for this one, 1 times x is x. 0 times y is 0. And then we have x equal 4. So for this one, y is actually going to equal to negative 5 when you transpose, but x is going to remain. So x is 4, not remain, x is 4. So the coordinate was 4, negative 5. Right, this one looks so. So this is the answer for this one, the coordinate of P. All right, then so now if you see, write down a matrix H of size two by two, which represent the enlargement of the scale factor about the origin. So if I bought the origin and a scale factor of three, it means that it would be three, zero, zero, three. So it's gonna enlarge by three and it's the above the origin. All right, let me see what I'm saying. Let me say determine the Determine the coordinate of 5, 7 under the combined transformation of H followed by J. Um, oh, that was J. So J was up here. So I'm going to do the enlargement first. And that's what they say. So that means under the enlargement, it's going to be. 3, 0, 0, 3. So do the enlargement first and then followed by the, the J. All right, so 5, negative 7, let me see what I want. All right, so 3, 5, 15. That's going to be 0 times 7, which is 0. Let me just put it in. 0 times that 0, 3 times 7, negative 21. So it's like it just increase the number by 3. That's what the scale factor actually means. So you have 15, negative 21. But now it's supposed to undergo H, J. That's it. It's an H and then followed by J. So I could put J up front. Uh, is it already 0, negative 1, 1, 0. So we just have a multiply this two by two matrix by this column. Let's go. So zero times fifteen is zero. Negative or uh, zero times fifteen zero negative times that positive two, and then one times fifteen is fifteen. So the answer should be two fifteen. Let us double check how we can do a work.
Did I look at the wrong? What was this? This is not two, this is 21. Oh my God. So not double. So it's supposed to be 21. So zero times that, negative times that, positive 21. Good thing I double check this because I'm so tired. So it's going to be 21. 15. Let me look again. So it says each, each of the three is zero, right? So they are given, let me see what they are giving me first. First, they gave me five and seven. So three, five, 15, yeah, that's right. Three, five, 15, zero times that. Boom, that are the X, zero times that, three, seven, 21. All right, next it undergoes H, which is zero, negative one, one zero. Let me just check about this as I made that around for two. So zero times 15 is zero. Negative times this is the 21. One times 15, 15. Yeah, so this would be the answer. 21, 15. All right, so you see the graph of the quadratic x squared that is shown below. Or not. Oh, oh. It's not the coordinates of the point M and N are negative one and y, x, y, respectively, determine the value of x and y. What they say was the equation. Um, the equation is y equal x squared. So basically, they give us x is equal to negative 1. So that means y is going to be equal to. So y is equal to x squared. That is the formula given, right? So since we don't know what y is, but we know what 1 x is. So we're going to put negative 1 there. So it's going to be negative 1 squared. So why are one? What, what I don't know why them ask for. Oh, oh Jesus. Um okay. ask for why it is, right? Yes, yeah, so x and negative one, so why are one? Oh my music here. So the answer right here, so y is equal to one. And for this one. Uh, this is the formula. So I'm not going to write about the formula. Guys, forgive me. I'm, I'm going to do so many hours. I really want you guys to do it, right? So they give us the point x9. So that means so y9, right? So y9, and that is equal to x squared. So what we do we find the square root? So x is equal to 3. And that would be our answer. And see the it actually there, so. It's actually there on the road. So for this one, it's above it. So you can see it's a 1 to 3. And that is where it's 1 mark. So we know the values now. So I'm not going to put this as. I'm not going to put it in here. Let me see what I'm going to press. He said, determine the gradient of MA. Determine the gradient of MA. So, so to find the gradient, we're going to use Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Know that y2. Oh god, this was 39, right? And this was negative 1, 1. So I'm going to name this as 2. So we have y2. It's 2. So that means this is going to be 9 for y2. 
on x1 will be 1. So minus 1. And this now we have 3. Minus minus 1. The 9 minus 1 is about 8. This is going to add. So we get 4. Because both of them negative. So the gradient are 2. So tired man. But I really have to look. We have to look up over So x is equal to 2, the like gradient. And they ask for the equation of the line. So the equation now will be y equal mx plus c. So we know the gradient of the line m and 2. So we can just punch in them points here. And try to write out from there. So x. So the y intercept power three. No, me are mids guys. We already know the gradient, right? So if we know the gradient, we only need three. Wouldn't it the y intercept be this? Yeah, that's how we cut the graph. So it's going to be this, but I'm going to work it out still. All right, so x is going to be 3 plus c. And then we use the point 3 and 9. So that means x is going to be 9. Let's so multiply 2, 3, 6 plus c. And we carry 6 over here. So it will be 9 minus 6. So the y intercept is 3. That was actually showing on the graph. So 3 in the tired will be a sharp. So the equation would be uh, da, 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 um, we enter 2, so it will be 2x plus 3. And we have to have y on the front. And it said the equation of the line, which is parallel and passing through the origin. So if you parallel, it means it has the same gradient. And it's a passing through the origin. That means a 2x length. <sighs> no, I am so, so sorry. Um, when two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. And if you go to the origin, I'll see. All right, so this will be the last one. So it says the diagram below that John so scale show the position of two ships P and Q on the anchor. Fp is the vertical face of the cliff jutting out of the water. P and Q are 118 meters apart. Ft equal 8 meter. Angle F Pt as Fpt is 40 degrees and it says determine the angle of elevation of T from P. So it's from P, so it's right here. That means it will be this angle. So that is actually given. Oh, that's why I wrote one more. So that will be 40. And it's shown right here that, right? Every angle of elevation, I want to put pressure. All right, so let's go now. It says the length Ft, Ft, oh, which is right here, All right? So let us use, consider this right angle triangle right here. So tired. If I saw now you guys, are because, okay, so tired. So we are consider this triangle. So if you're looking from this angle, this will be our opposite. This would be our adjacent. All right. So that's opposite over adjacent. So that would be tan. Uh, tan 40. Or we can from that angle. Equal opposite, which is 80. Over where we call it is the FP. With a cross multiplication something. So that gives us Fp. I 
Let's start. 16 points for average score. Equal to 80. And of course, we're going to transpose. So we divide by 1040. We go for everybody who left on this right now, all right? If we were share it already, so I just can go and make it. So let me just point that in my calculator because we have no time to waste. And that works out to 95.34. All right, so we can just 95.34. So it's 95.34. Well, I want the last one to be the angle of elevation of T from Q. So it's from T from Q. So it's this angle right here. That's the angle I want. Uh, and I find it all from my uh, calculation. It's 40. It's a 140. You know, the same thing I'm going to find it. I can go to the deeper calculation. I see it. You know, I can go to the deeper calculation. I'm going to at least need to find this link too. Oh, I know it, I know it. Come on. Yeah, I know it. We are just from this and we get our work given this. All right, so it's 95. Three, four. All right, so we're going to look at this opposite over adjacent. So we're going to use tan. Yeah, so it's tan. We're going to start with our The point should be opposite, which is 80. Opposite, we're going to add them to your door. I'm just going to check in my calculator as I'm super tired. Oh God. Yeah. This is 118 plus 95.34. So now 34, 533, 1. And I want to know that it is. So that's 213. I try to show it work. It says 213.34. All right. So when we divide that, we get 0 0.375. 0 0.375. And let's guess what you're gonna do. Press shift on your calculator. Turn. And I'm gonna see a negative one. Press this, press equal. And it should give you 20. All right, here's 20.6. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, guys. Everybody, very much. I appreciate it. I um, appreciate the love, everything. Good job, guys. All the best in your exam. All right. For those of you who want to join my class for um, the multiple choice preparation, let's see how it goes. I'll let me at least one more. All right. Thank you guys so much. This is not finished. I'm out. I'll see you guys in another video.